Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. How many of you have these strips of papers? You know, you cut off the white space around a book page or you trim something down and you end up with a bunch of these strips. What do you do with them? Well, I've been collecting a few of them. As you can see, I've got a little Ziploc bag here full of them and I've already selected a few. Let me show you what we're gonna do. So I've got a book page that I'm going to use as a temporary holding place. And then I've got some pieces of paper strips and it doesn't matter what size they are. I chose for today to show you the bigger pieces because I plan to do a bunch of pages with them. But if you have little strips, just use a smaller piece of paper if you like. I've got a little bit of glue and it's a lean tacky glue. I'm just gonna put a dot, not much, just a teeny tiny little dot, just to hold it in place on my parent sheet. Now you could use a craft sheet or something like that if you don't want to use a book page underneath. And I'm just gonna continue putting little dots and glue down these strips of paper. And it's okay if they go past the page. Ledger paper is from my grandparents' farm when they used to have wheat and sold it and would write down all their information and I took some of the pages and cut them up. So as you can see, I've got different widths, uh, different sizes and lengths, doesn't really matter. Now I have a little box here that I'm gonna set this down in because I'm gonna spray it. In fact, I may cut this one off. My box is just over eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches long. It may be 12 inches, maybe nine by 12, something like that. So I use it because most of my pages fit inside and when I spray, I don't get over spray all over my desk. All right, so now that I've got that in here, what I'm going to do is grab a couple of Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. This one happens to be Pop Rocks, which is a pretty shade of kind of a purple, pink, light purple, maybe light purple is what I'm going to call this. So I'm shaking it up because it's got mica in the bottom. My hands are filthy because I've been playing for a while. And I'm just going to spritz. Of course, this is where if the sprayer is locked, clogged up, I've got alcohol in this one. So I'll spray it over that nozzle and let it set for a moment. And then I'll clean it off. And a lot of times that fixes the clog. If not, then I'll take a needle and pop it in there. And if that fails, then I will go grab another sprayer. Ah, that cleaned it. So there's not a straight pin in there. All right, so I'm just lightly misting that over the page. You don't need a whole lot. I may go ahead and grab another color while I'm at it. This is a pale pink. It was used in the Enchanted Rose kit. Okay, I like that. Just a little bit of a pink. And then let's grab a stencil. So I've got the April 2022 Artistic Stencil Club. By the way, know that if you want to start your stencil club in the middle, there's one in the from last year or the year before that you want. When you sign up for the stencil club, you can say, hey, Linda, I want to start with in the comment field or make sure you send me a message and I'll be glad to start you with that one and then the next month you would get the current stencil club if you want a different one make sure you message me before I ship out and I can get those for you all right next I've got fully purple so again shake it up lay the stencil on top so I just stenciled over that I'm gonna grab another book page lay that on top of the stencil and soak up any extra tattered angels that's resting on the stencil. I'm just rubbing the page. And then I'll peel this off. So now I've got a book page that I've altered that I can use later on. And I'll remove my stencil and put it back in my file folder here. And while that's in the box, I'm gonna use my heat tool and dry it. All right, I'll take this out of the box and it should be nice and dry. Just getting a scrap of paper to put underneath my big piece for a moment. So next I've got some archival ink jet black. Use your favorite ink. It can be any color really. 
This time I've got a rubber stamp and this is the Corner Roses and I forgot to clean it the last time I used uh, Versa Mark on it so I need to clean it off because I could feel it was sticky. Okay, that's clean. So I'm going to use the Corner Roses and stamp that over my sprayed papers. I'm rotating the stamp so that it kind of fills in and has a random pattern going across. All right, so now what I'm going to do is take these off. So since you just put a slight little dot of glue, you should cut them off without really ripping it too much anyway. And I'll save that for another time I want to do the same technique or use it for a background for something else. Now a couple of these are pretty wide, so I'm going to trim those because I want roughly an inch or less width-wise. This one will be a little bit more than an inch. I've gone ahead and done that to a bunch of other strips of paper. Same technique, just use different stencils, different colors of Tattered Angels. I've got some in greens, and this one has some yellow greens so you can see a variety of different things and then i have just random scraps of paper so they're just all different scraps i'm just going to lay this out here on my desk kind of move these over and let's get another sheet of paper and make something with those so i've got a book page here that i've trimmed off the white space that's how i got some of these strips and what I want to do is place these on here. And I think I'm going to go this way. I was thinking about this way, but well, maybe I will go this way. Because I think what I want to do is make some cards and some corner tuck spots or pockets and whatnot. So I'm going to take this and cut them a couple of times so that I have a few different sizes. So I'll just kind of grab a few of these and cut them. All right, so I've got a few laid out here. So now what I'm going to do is grab my glue and then just start picking up some of these strips and gluing them down on my base paper. So there's the first row. I'm just going to come down just a little bit lower and then choose a different color and put that down. In fact, I may come over just a little bit so they're not lined up with each other. And I'll cut off the excess so I can use those pieces later. All right, so I'm just gonna pick up my strips and move those out of the way. Cut off the excess here. I'm going to check to see if there's any of these that look like they're not adhered down really well. But I think for the most part, they're adhered down. I'll cut off this excess on the outside edge. It'll be another strip to put in my strip bag. Alright, so the next step is I want to add some more texture to it. I'm gonna grab a scrap of paper and I've got the 1912 little script. I've got my Versamark ink pad. And I think I want, let's do some gold glitter embossing powder. All right, so I'm just gonna ink up my ink with, or my stamp with Versamark watermark stamp pad you can use whatever embossing ink that you have and i think i want to do it crosswise so i'm just going to come like this and then i'm going to grab this embossing powder and sprinkle it all over now if there's any wet glue the embossing powder will stick to it so if you don't want that to accidentally be in certain areas make sure that your page is completely dry i'm just tapping off the excess and then i'll clean up the embossing powder which goes everywhere 
<laughs> you didn't know glitters is the herpes of the art world that if you get it you can never get rid of it just so that I don't get too hot on my work surface here I just put a baking sheet I'm going to use my heat tool and heat this up embossing powder whenever you're working with it you do not want your um, face over it so you want to stay back or wear a mask so that you're not breathing in those particles whenever this embossing powder is ready it turns shiny so you can kind of see that it looks dull at first and then it'll turn shiny. Don't touch the embossing powder because it'll still be hot. I'm looking to see if I missed a spot. It looks like I missed one right there. You don't want to heat it too much that it melts down into the paper. You want it to stay on the surface. You just kind of have to watch it and practice a little bit to see how the embossing powder is going to react to the heat tool. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'll get rid of my pan, which could be hot, so don't touch it. I'm grabbing a scrap of book page here, and I want to glue this to it so it'll be a little bit thicker because my dictionary page that I used was rather thin. So I'm just going to go across this back side. And I'll flip it over, and then from the back, I'll use my bone folder to smooth it out. Okay, let me get the next things ready. I want to put some lines around each block. So I'm going to take a Sharpie and then just quickly make little boxes around each one. They don't have to be perfect, just boxes. All right, so my glue is dry enough now that I'm going to go to the sewing machine and stitch down each row. I have a regular sewing machine with a regular needle, regular thread. It is key to use new thread. Don't get the box that's been in the closet for 10 years because that thread will be brittle and it will break while you're sewing. Save that for other mixed media projects where you can just make a nest out of that. I'm going to do a variety of stitches. I'll do some zigzag and I'll do some stripe stitch on here. So I'm going to start at one edge, and I think I'm just going to go down the center. All right, so I've stitched on top of these. So now I have stitched on each one of those. Let's trim this down. So first I want to trim off the excess book page that's around it. And you know what? I want to make some journal cards. So do I want to find some journal cards first? Or do I want to just cut the pieces? I think I want to find some journal cards and tags and things to glue this onto. So let me find those and I'll be right back. All right, so I found some cards and a couple of tags that were already cut in my stash. And let's look at these. So I've got some tag shapes that are roughly three inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And then I had some journal cards kind of a gray cardstock and these are three and a quarter by five and a half so both are five and a half inches and I I don't necessarily want to have a pocket that matches this in on the same journal page but I want a pocket for later on so I think what I want to do first is let's cut a strip I think that's what I'll do is cut a strip this way and this is about 11 inches so I want it to be five and a quarter so that would be one pocket and I think I'll go ahead and cut this to be five and a quarter as well so those will be pockets I've got a little piece here left over so we'll do something else with that so for my tags I'm thinking since this is roughly four and a quarter wide what if we did a one inch strip or a two inch strip let's look i think i'll just cut these apart and i could have left them as just individual strips 
but I kind of like the mass producing all at once. So what if we took that and cut off that corner and just made strips so that each one would have a little snippet on there. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so those will go there. And I got enough to do journal cards. Now, do I want to do those across this way? I think that's what I'll do on those. Okay, I've got a plan. So we've already got these. So I'm going to cut this to be five and a half inches because that's what these all are. So there's one, there's two, and this will make three. And I have two journal cards left, so we'll just see. Hey, that worked out. It actually fits. So that'll go across there. And then we've got this little piece left. We'll just do it like that. And let me find one more card that I can use that on. I've got an artist trading card size. Okay, that'll work. All right, so let me plan out what we're going to do next. Okay, I've come up with an idea. I went ahead and went around the edges of all the pieces with distressed inks. So now what I want to do is I'm going to grab a scrap of paper here. I'm going to grab one of these uh, tags. And I've got the Corner Roses stamp. And I think what I want to do is, I'm looking at this, I think I'll stamp it. I think I'm going to stamp it across the corner. Let's see how this looks. And then what I'll do is glue this piece down and trim off that corner. So I'll stamp each one of these real fast. All right, and then I've got these journal cards, the bigger ones. And I think for this one, I think I'll do, I may stamp it in the middle here like this on that particular one. And then I'll glue that in the corner. And then on this one, I have it going across that way. But I'm thinking of changing my mind and making it go up and down and stamp the roses coming off the side here. Like that. So I'm going to do all of those real fast. Well, since I accidentally dropped it on here, I'm just going to, on purpose, stamp it lightly all the way around. See, when you have a mistake, when you repeat it, it looks like it's part of the design. All right, so for this one, I think we'll do the same thing, just kind of go down the side. And then we'll have this strip that'll go on there. Okay, let me clean off my desk. All right, so now what I want to do is glue all these pieces down onto my cards and tags. If it matters to you, you may want, if this strip of book page is going up in, or side to side, which it is, I'm going ahead and putting it to where it's, where you read it correctly. I don't know. If it was sideways, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> okay, so now all of those have those pieces down. And I think the next thing I want to do is put some words on top. So here's what I've got. I've got all of my words that I offer in my shop, and I'm going to do Aspire to be Amazing. Put that on an acrylic block. Grab my ink pad. And again, I save the white strips. This is cardstock whenever I trim down a printed journal card, or when I sell the rubber stamps, I print them on cardstock, and I have strips left over. And I found that I can take these rubber stamps and find the center and stamp it. 
and then I just trim that and I'll save that strip. Sometimes I will just take the time to stamp it out a couple more times if I have room. I don't know if it'll fit. It'll be really tight, but we're gonna try. And then put my stamp away and I'll go ahead and trim these so I'll have it. And I have a bowl that I'll stick them in. So when I need them, I have them handy. I'll go ahead and put some distress inks on the edges. And I happen to have some black paper. Now, if you don't have black paper, you could take some acrylic paint and paint some scraps of paper and cut it into strips. You could use a black marker and put a border around by swiping it around a piece of paper. So just because I have black paper doesn't mean you have to use it as well. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm looking at these and I'm thinking that like this could go on here and you could add fabric to these. I think what I'm going to do is just glue down the words and if I want to embellish it more when I put it in my journal, I could. Maybe I have a theme that I'm using and I could use an embellishment that matches that theme. But I went ahead and did a bunch of these words. So I'm going to glue these down. All right, so here's how they turned out. Oh, I forgot the one, there it is. I thought I forgot one. I've got the little card. All right, so here are two pockets. So we'll be able to put cards behind those. So there's two pockets. This is an artist trading card size. So we'll put that there. Then I had all of these journal cards that I made. And here's another journal card here. And then we had these tag shapes, which I think I'm going to wait before I put any fabric or fibers on there again, so that I can choose to update it according to the journal I'm working in or whatever tidbits I want. But I thought you might enjoy a quick way to use up those strips. It may not be quick, quick, but I now have a whole Ziploc baggie full of strips. And my thought was I could take some book pages and sit down while I'm watching TV and just glue those strips down. And then I can come back later and stamp over the top of them, cut them up and make them into various elements. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today that it inspires you to get into your craft area, whether it be your kitchen table or you have a full studio, whatever it may be, have some fun. Use those things that you have around your house. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask use that comment box down below for comments about this video if you liked it what was your favorite part please tell me give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it definitely share it with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do know I go live on Mondays at 3 45 p.m. Central Standard Time and check out my other tutorials that I have on my blog as well as here on YouTube all right everybody thank you so much for watching have a fabulous day bye everybody